these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ready, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. The Word of the Lord. I have found David, my servant. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown. Over the people I have set a youth. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, that my arm may make him strong. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior, and I will make him the firstborn, highest in the kings of the earth. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need, and he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God, where Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of offering that only the priest could lawfully eat, and shared with his companions. And he said to them, The Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The last couple Days, you know, the Pharisees were a bunch of complainers, right? They were looking for absolutely everything and anything to complain about. I mean, just ridiculous stuff, right? Definitely. Uh, and, and they were looking, you know, they, so they had to trick Jesus, try and get Jesus to say something. They couldn't just find something that Jesus blatantly said, well, they had to trick him. And, 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 and we, we, we see this going on today. This is in, in the church. It is, you know, just, just complaint after complaint after complaint after complaint and trickery and 
adjust all kinds of stuff. It really is, is heartbreaking. But Jesus kept his cool and uh, went about his work, as I said the other day, resolutely determined on his journey to Jerusalem. Uh, but what I've been reflecting on in regards to uh, the first reading and then uh, Jesus uh, choosing his apostles. So, you know, God chose Saul. Saul, well, I mean, Saul did well for a while, but could not persevere, and his human frailties just turned into a mess. Uh, you can see glimpses of good, uh, yet uh, just getting all types of mixed up and human emotions, passions, right, jealousy, you know, those types of things. Uh, he wanted to kill David. But David, God's chosen one, who not only did God choose, but gave him this great title, right, family of David, right? Uh, and, uh, I mean, David committed murder and adultery murder to cover up adultery. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that. And, uh, of course, but God saw the goodness in David's heart and how David did really want to please God. So, you know, what I've been thinking about lately is not only, we, we talk about this all the time, that, you know, Jesus chose a bunch of fishermen Right? But when you think about it, Jesus chose a bunch of fishermen, most of them kind of like were neighbors, right? all from the same small area of Galilee. A couple of them, of course, were from, from Judah, and, and, uh, and, but I mean, Israel in and of itself quite small. Uh, not an intellectual group, uh, I think definitely steadfast in terms of their, their Jewish faith, uh, but they had human weaknesses, frailties, I mean, that, that became evident, I mean, you know, Jesus, I mean, we hear it a couple of times, of how long must I adore you, O ye of little faith, uh, and of course, with the traitor in the bunch, and the denier in the bunch, and from this very small area of the world and a very small area of this, this nation. And so really it comes down to, I think, two things. And you can't separate the two, I think. That on our journey to sainthood, it really is all about what is in really stay humble of heart. Pure of heart, poor in spirit, right? The Beatitudes, I mean, desire to be perfected in the Beatitudes, regardless of how many mistakes we make over and over and over again. But I think the other thing, that I'm going to have to even, it's three things really, and the third thing that I wasn't going to include is really the most important. The second thing is formation, is formation, right? It didn't matter who Jesus uh, chose, it's the formation that they had. But even in that formation, it did not help Judas. Uh, Peter, obviously, I think is the, the prime example of somebody who started off the part from me, Lord, a sinful man, denying Jesus to writing these two great encyclicals and being the long-standing hope that led his church in the uh, first years of Catholicism. Uh, and of course, so much so, his readings, his writings, the first two encyclicals of the church a scripture teacher that I had in seminary said, always read St. Peter's 
two letters as the first two encyclicals of the first poem. They take on a whole new meaning and they do. It really is quite profound. And there were a lot of people who said, well, you couldn't have written, you couldn't have, you couldn't have written that. Well, it shows formation. It shows actually, right, this, this uh, simplicity of heart, this humble of heart formation. But then the most important thing that I was going to leave out, and then of course, the Holy Spirit would have none of it. No, you're not going to forget me, the Holy Spirit said. You're not going to forget me. I'm the most important part of this equation. And indeed it is the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit. Cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Trusting in the Holy Spirit. And of course, when you trust in the Holy Spirit, you are indeed trusting in the Father and the Son, right? The Father and the Son sends us the Holy Spirit to guide us in all things that are truth, and then also to apply that truth to our lives. And so I'm thinking about the turmoil in the church today. And, and it really is upsetting, saddening, uh, head-shaking. But then I, I've been thinking of late that, you know, it's, it's really nothing compared to what the Reformation must have been. Nothing compared to what the Arian heresy must have been. If we survived the Arian heresy, if we survived the turmoil of, of uh, Islam almost overrunning, right? Uh, well, I mean, we had many attacks on Christianity over the years. Uh, the Reformation, but what really what comes to my mind is this ragtag team of fishermen, tax collectors, right, these dudes, who had three years formation in Jesus and still were a mess, but merely by the descent of the Holy Spirit, right, and that's when things really change sent to the Holy Spirit, these guys brought conversion to the entire world. It was not them. It was their cooperation with the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that trusting in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to them. What's going on today in the church, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is child play. It is nothing. It is absolutely nothing compared to what the holy apostles were able to accomplish by trusting in Jesus Christ and just cooperating with the Holy Spirit. So, as we hear in Scripture, let us not 